while the slide is loading. Uh, it is my great pleasure to participate in this workshop and, um, uh, and uh, to um, uh, serve as a discussant on the theme of computational biology. Uh, so uh, happy to, to provide uh, some of my viewpoints um, that stem from my many years of um, exposure to cancer research. Yeah, there we go. Thank you. All right. Does that Oh, okay, yeah. So just a little bit of background. So, uh, so my lab is is focused on developing statistical methods and tools to study uh, the evolution of cancer genomes. Uh, so, as we all know, uh, that cancer cells uh, does that work? How does pointer work? Yeah. Cancer cells uh, continually evolve by acquiring genomic alterations, and uh, so. Um, uh, the, the uh, genetic uh, variants, uh, as in, uh, mentioned in, in Xihong's talk, are germline variants, and which are basically shared by all of the individual cells in the human body. Uh, but when we talk about cancer cells, uh, in the process of, uh, of the tumor development, they continue to acquire additional genomic alterations or mutations, uh, which are uh, called the somatic mutations. So when we look at the somatic mutations, for example, in this illustration, these are uh, cells in different colors are represented by a unique set of mutations. Um, so uh, every tumor is consisting of uh, multiple sets of cancer cells with different mutations, and when a selection pressure happens, such as, uh, such as a therapeutic uh, a treatment to patients, most of the cancer cells are killed, but unfortunately a rare uh, cl cluster or group of uh, cells um, would escape the pressure and then uh, further expand, uh, leading to cancer relapse. And this is the fundamental reason why we uh, are interested in understanding cancer evolution in order to to understand uh, and uh, identify new uh, therapeutic targets. Um, and then furthermore, uh, just as as human, the ecological context of cancer cells is very important, such as uh, uh, simply the surrounding immune cells uh, of the tumors, tumor cells that impacts its evolutionary trajectory. Um, so, to, so I just jumped right, right into uh, answering the questions that were provided to me. Uh, so the, in my opinion, the, the next stage of the research in, in my field for the next five to ten years is finally we're really making an impact in, and, and achieve, achieving a big time uh, in uh, moving the personalized medicine forward uh, as we're finally uh, obtaining the multimodality high dimensional data in order to understand or gain new knowledge of the tumor ecosystem. Uh, so here in multimodality, uh, I'm referring to the RNA molecule activity, DNA, methylation, histone modification that are co-occurring and mutually uh, regulating each other at the single cell level and as, a, as well as the multi-cell but cell type specific fashion. Uh, and what I, uh, I would also like to add is the spatial and temporal uh, regulations. All right, so, uh, and then to give you a specific example, uh, this is a, a very hot topic right now in the cancer world that the, the cancer researchers are, uh, are starting to realize that we, we need to understand the joint variations uh, between the transcriptal type space, uh, meaning uh, the transcriptome activity or profiles uh, within the tumor cells uh, versus the genotype space of the same cells. So the idea is that both spaces are extremely elastic and variable uh, and sometimes the variation are correlated between the two spaces, but many times they're, they're disconnected. Um, and, um, but the common belief right now is that uh, in order to identify tumor cells and then enforce these tumor cells into a favorable state that responds uh, well to treatment, we have to uh, be able to better understand the joint variations between uh, these two spaces, the transcriptal type and then the genotype space. And imagine now that uh, in reality, uh, we really need to understand uh, five more dimensions uh, in, uh, in addition to these. Um, so the, the other aspect of, uh, of the, uh, the next stage to me is that the computational biologist is finally taking a driver's seat to, uh, together with the biologists and, and clinicians. Uh, and, uh, um, 
I'll give you an example of how I try to do that. Uh, and, uh, so uh, w in my research, we study a, t a, f a phenomenon, biological phenomenon called uh, plasticity. Uh, this is an evolving concept. It, it was come up with, uh, uh, proposed by biologists more than four decades ago and is closely related to another concept called cancer, stem uh, uh, cancer cell stemness. Uh, so this is a fuzzy concept that even the biologists don't agree with, with each other. So in my opinion, it's like they, they are like J.K. Rowling writing the Harry Potter uh, a novel at the beginning with great imagination and, then, and, and really on point in the importance of, of studying a, a cancer cell phenomenon. But it's just a concept. And then, uh, and over the years, especially the single cell sequencing technology then allowed the biologists to, to be able to, to measure and quantify uh, what exactly is plasticity. So when I give talks to the cancer biologist, I, I propose um, my central hypothesis is that a fuzzy biological concept like plasticity may be improved by mathematical definition based on the new technologies. Uh, so, so biologists, Always respect technologists and, and uh, those people who develop new ways to, to measure biological phenomenon. We, uh, I consider us statisticians are also technologists. We are also developing new ways to measure and improve the biological phenomenon. We just need to keep reminding the biologists that that's what, I, what we're doing. Um, and or sp specifically, so my lab is focused on using integrative deconvolution models to help define features of plasticity in human tissues in mathematical terms. So we measure the genetic diversity of tumor cells. This is a, a manuscript in collaboration with Hong Tu that is curr currently under review at Nature. And then second, we develop a transcriptome plasticity uh, measure for tumor cells. And this work was published in 2022 at Nature Biotechnology. Uh, next question, so what is, uh, is the most uh, uh, exciting and pivotal break breakthrough? Uh, so I think of it as uh, what is the, the impact uh, that I believe the statistics and AI will play a major role in, in making. So f the first and foremost is early detection and patient diagnosis. Uh, uh, here's a, another example that, um, so there are, are um, at least more than 200,000 uh, new diagnoses of lung cancer every year, and hence uh, the, uh, the U.S. Preventative Service Task Force uh, recommends screening for, for lung cancer, which has been shown to significantly improve the survival outcomes of these patients. Uh, however, the current uh, uh, recommended uh, procedure or steps for screening does not consider w whether the, uh, these individuals have developed a cancer. And this is uh, not wise and concerning because by year 2025 in the U.S., we'll be living, uh, at least 20 million cancer survivors will be living ar around us. And obviously, these patients, these individuals have been treated uh, with um, uh, radiation or chemotherapies. Therefore, their trajectory of developing lung cancer will be different from the rest of us. Uh, so... So we developed uh, using uh, existing, uh, a, a very unique cohort at MD Anderson, developed a risk prediction model to, to predict specifically the onset of second primary um, cancer in lung. Um, and the second, and the going back to what I mentioned, the multimodality is that uh, we, we, I believe we will be able to identify new molecular mechanisms which uh, then support the therapeutics and the new drug development, which is still much needed in the cancer world. And the last, I don't know much about, but I have heard a lot from my clinic, uh, clinician friends, uh, and, and which also makes sense is that we need a much improved and especially AI-based clinical trial. All of our strategies that we develop, or, or new drug development, have to go through clinical trials to then make an impact to be used by patient. So the clinical trial will sooner or later become, or has been, the, the bottleneck uh, of, of how we can uh, help the patient uh, in, in the clinic. Uh, so, um, I've, you know, kudos to my, uh, to my colleagues at MD Anderson uh, for developing uh, the, the next generation clinical trials. 
for example, they're using synthetic uh, uh, control arm as, as compared to the real control arm. Uh, finally, the most important open question uh, is, uh, I believe, for, for cancer world, as people are uh, realizing it, uh, hence the computational biologist being sitting at the, at the main uh, poker table, is how do we analyze genomic data with a constantly increasing complexity and, and, the, and the number with reliability, reproducibility, and impact? So uh, everybody has talked about impact and asking the, uh, the right question. And reliability and re reproducibility is really what we're, uh, we statisticians uh, um, are trained to do. So this is our prime time. Um, how could an individual statistician get, it, get started to contribute? I just write collaborate and collaborate closely inside a multidisciplinary t uh, team. Uh, I wrote something that, that maybe, uh, maybe individuals can start not to do, basically uh, uh, you know, uh, not to be isolated or ex uh, ex excluding uh, collaborators or uh, people from other disciplines. Um, and what would the, a team and a department uh, can do? Um, so um, other than fostering collaborations and the senior scientist uh, should bring the willing collaborators, uh, clinicians and biologists to the willing statisticians. I think most importantly is we need to build uh, obtain resources uh, to, to build a community that start out with good funding and good data. And that's always what attracts uh, the first few, uh, you know, let's start building a community. We need a startup money, right? <laughs> you know, so let's say we build a startup, startup company, what do we do? We talk to the VC, we talk to the angels, and we get, uh, you know, enough resources to get things started. And also we want to ensure uh, deliverables and products. Uh, so for participating statisticians, there should be agreement uh, with journal publishers uh, uh, for um, uh, both at the start and com uh, computational uh, biology or clinical journals uh, for publishing the, the findings uh, that's cross-disciplinary and assurance from department chairs on uh, the, in the participating individual's contribution in tenure evaluation uh, and the uh, uh, always pushing for deliverables that will then give us, uh, uh, you know, obtain more resources in terms of funding and data. And with that, I'll, I'll, I'll stop and I look forward to more discussions. Okay. 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 We can, we can, we can save the question at the end and move on to the last speaker.